what shade of blue you root for, this is a special night on the calendar. It's time for another installment of the best rivalry in college basketball. North Carolina, Duke, a part of ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. It's decided from the very beginning which shade of blue defines which side you're on. First words to big steps. First games to big moments. Your fate is sealed. But how can you complain? It's two of the greatest in history. The best robbery in sports. And today, your blood runs just as blue as it did in the very beginning. We have the experience, we have the youth this year, and we're gonna crush Duke. Does UNC really think they stand a chance against our talented freshmen? Zion Williamson, Trey Jones, Cam Reddish, RJ Baird? <laughs> That's the cutest thing I ever heard. And right now, all that matters is which shade of blue are you? This is a sonic blockbuster on ESPN. You need proof, you need evidence this is a big game. The stars are out, the celebrities are here, and here's just one example of one of the big names, and I mean big names here at Cameron tonight. President Obama is in the house to watch North Carolina and Duke here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. How good is this rivalry? How close has it been? As you take a look at Duke and Carolina, the 46th all-time meeting with both of them ranked in the top 10. Duke's 123, Carolina's 122. Over the last 103, UNC's got one more win. Duke has scored three more points. Plain and simple, it is the best rivalry in college basketball. We are thrilled to be here tonight. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, Maria Taylor in a moment. You played in this rivalry. What does it mean? It is the best rivalry, not just in college basketball, but in all of sports. 36 Final Fours between these two teams. 10 national championships in the last 37 years. It is remarkable. Duke, Carolina, always delivers. It, always. It always does. Talk about what it's like for the freshmen to play in this game for the first time. I don't think you can describe what this building is like and what the feeling is like to go on this floor for Duke, Carolina. The air is heavier. It is hotter. It is not just any other game. You try to treat it that way to fool yourself into thinking it's any other game, but this is bigger than any other game they'll play in the regular season. Some players say they're exhausted by the end of warm-up. What about the stars we've got on both sides? Well, if you start with Duke, Zion Williams and then R.J. Barrett are not only two of the best freshmen in the country, they're two of the best players in the country, maybe the two best players in the country. Both of them averaging over 22 points per game. Zion Williamson, nine and a half rebounds a game. He has two blocks, two steals, does absolutely everything. And the left-handed R.J. Barrett is just spectacular, coming off a triple-double in his last ball game against NC State. And for North Carolina, they have outstanding shooters. This team averages over nine three made per game over 10 made threes per game in ACC play led by their freshman point guard Kobe White who averages 18 points per game in conference play and has the best hair in college basketball <laughs> and Cam Johnson who's an outstanding shooter shoots 48 percent from three this is not your father's Carolina team with an inside game that is going to kill you they will hurt you from the perimeter in this one for more on this big game and how hot a ticket this is here's Maria Taylor well, Dan, it's one of the hottest tickets in sports because right now on Vivid Seats, you can see the average cost of a UNC Duke ticket. We're average out at about $2,600. That's second only to the Super Bowl. And not only that, one fan even paid over $10,000 just to be in Cameron Indoor for this one. I spoke to a fan that came all the way from Seattle, said he brought tickets for his entire family, $2,000 a pop. Not because he's a Duke fan, but because he wanted to be in the building on one of the most special nights ever. And we also have Todd Gurley here. We also have Spike. Mike Lee, Greg Olson, and as you saw, the 44th President of the United States. It's a star-studded event. The kid is here, Ken Griffey Jr. As Maria mentioned, Spike Lee is here as well. They are all here to see Duke and Carolina as another chapter will be written into this storied rivalry between two of the game's most iconic 
historic programs with by the way a couple of Hall of Fame coaches of course beginning with the Roy Williams of North Carolina Mike Krzyzewski of Duke the 11th time they have met with Coach Williams at Carolina with each program of the top 10 and what's the tally well of course Jay it's five for each coach <laughs> you couldn't make it any more even between these two programs. Ready to go with the officials, Mike Eads, Brian Dorsey, Ron Groover, an outstanding crew. And we are ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. Williamson for Duke, Brooks for Carolina on the tip. Mike Eads will get us going. And we're underway at Cameron. Carolina starting off in man-to-man. -man. One of the key matchups is going to be Trey Jones and Kobe White. Jones's defense on White is going to be a determining factor in this ballgame. Right now, Luke May starts on Zion Williamson. Barrett misses the three. Offensive rebound, Marquise Bolden. Carolina, an outstanding rebounding team. Duke as well. And actually, Duke, the better offensive rebounding team. Usually, that's the North Carolina Tar Heels. Slipping and injured is Zion Williamson. Back the other way, a layup for Cam Johnson. And 36 seconds into the game, Zion Williamson is down. He blew through his shoe. Yeah. Look at his wow. look at his left shoe. He blew completely through the shoe, and then he started holding his right knee. I mean, his his shoe blew apart. I've never seen anything like that. Watch when he plants right here. His foot comes out of his shoe. That's unbelievable. He broke his shoe with his own foot. But as you say, the injury does not appear to have anything to do with the left foot. He did reach for the back of the right knee. And if we get information, we'll pass it along as he gets some work done. Jack White has come into the game for Williamson. If anybody else on the bench has a size 15 shoe, they better give it up <laughs> right now. <laughs> so some concern in the opening moments here for Duke. What a bizarre happening to start a game. White from the corner, and White has really struggled shooting the three. Remember the Syracuse game? He went 0 for 10 from three in that game. Hasn't made a three since after starting off the year, shooting the ball very well. His last three was against Wake Forest when he went 1 of 4. Good pass inside. Wow. And Luke May all alone. Somebody blew an assignment as he gets an easy layup. That's just a simple little low cross screen that Carolina runs as part of their secondary break. They run it so often, it is difficult to guard unless you're completely alert. Driving is Reddish. Good defense by Johnson. Reddish on the deck comes up with it but then loses it out of bounds back to the heels. What an amazing start to this basketball game. You know, Duke knocked back with Zion Williamson going out. And I can never, you've seen a player fall out of his shoe, have a shoe fall off. You've never seen him destroy his shoe. No. He's, the legend of Zion Williamson grows. So a great start for Carolina. They're a much older team than Duke is. Not that guy, Kobe White, a freshman. But Carolina does start three seniors. Duke, of course, starts four freshmen. As it's knocked out of bounds, it still belongs to Duke. Both teams, Jay, as you well know, like to play fast. Two of the fastest, highest scoring teams we have in the country. Well, North Carolina wants to run at every opportunity, and that's really the challenge for Duke, is to try to make North Carolina into a half-court team and try to slow the advance, make it a dribble advance instead of a pass advance. Zion Williamson, as you can see, heading to the locker room right now for the Blue Devils. And thus far in the game, North Carolina's pressure has been a factor. R.J. Barrett for three. R.J. Barrett has really begun to shoot the ball better from midway through the season on. It stays with Carolina. Kobe White putting a lot of pressure on the Duke defense. Crowd thought it should have been... Duke ball, but it stays with the heels. Kobe White's had some big games recently, including a 33-point effort in an overtime win at Miami. His second 33-point game of the season. He had 33 points and seven made threes against Texas earlier in the year. That's too easy. What a terrific out-of-bounds underplay by North Carolina just to get an easy layup right under the Duke basket. Carolina 20 and 5, 10 and 2 in the league. Duke 23 and 2, 11 and 1 in the league. Duke ranked number one. Carolina number eight. Off a screen, reddish, too strong. 
And no offensive rebounding for Duke. Carolina able to run after the defensive board. Brooks, who's a good passer for a big man, into May, dips in that shoulder a little bit and knocks down another one. He's already got six. Well, he knows he's being guarded by Jack White, who is a good player, but he is not the defender that Luke May has seen in most of the games that he's been playing this year. He is drawing the top individual defender up front in every game he plays. And it would have been Williamson. It was Williamson before the injury. Reddish, nice look. White's open again and can't get it to go. And it's been one and out every time down for Duke. Quick shot by Johnson, one of the leading three-point shooters in the country, comes down to Trey Jones. Good rebound by the Duke point guard. These Duke guards are good rebounders. Hey, R.J. Barrett is 12 of his last 23 from three over his last four games into this one. A travel called on Reddish, and Mike Krzyzewski's going to his bench again. White, who missed a couple of threes, will come out. Javin Delorier will come in, and that means a little more size on Luke May as well. Well, isn't it odd some of the, the things that have happened? Duke, like Duke has had an amazing year, but they lost Zion Williamson in the second half against Florida State when he's poked in the eye. They lost Trey Jones in the first few minutes against Syracuse. Cam Reddish didn't play in that game because he got sick right before the game. Just a lot of weird things. Jones just picks the pocket of White. Oh, what a play. And what a recovery by White to knock it out of bounds. Well, that is a huge matchup because of the fantastic defense that can be played by Trey Jones putting pressure on Kobe White and Kobe White just saving a bucket what a great block great steal great block by two outstanding freshman guards usually Trey Jones when he gets the ball down court takes it to the basket harder and goes to the other side of the basket to protect against the block Duke with just the one bucket so far the three by Barrett on the season not a good three-point shooting team you saw another miss there. They were great in the win over Virginia. 13 for 21, but on the season, just 31%. Carolina, meanwhile, has gotten the ball inside more. Luke Mays off to a hot start, and they're up five. Johnson for three. Reddish the rebound. Good defense on Cam Johnson to make him put the ball on the floor. When he shoots it from the catch spot, he is so difficult to deal with. Reddish misses the driving layup, and back comes White. Jones stays in front of him. This is a Carolina pace. Kenny Williams. Offensive rebound and the putback for Brooks. When that shot was taken, the floor was spread. Tough to get blockouts. And Garrison Brooks has been rebounding at a higher level of late. He's the best offensive rebounder on this Carolina team. Almost three per game. There at baseline, cross court, Reddish for three. Got it. What a great screen by Marquise Bolden. Look at Johnson get down the court in a hurry and draws the foul. So big news early. Zion Williamson leaves with an injury. Carolina's off to a good start, up four on the road here at Cameron. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's new made-to-crave menu. Available at participating restaurants now. And T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, glad you're with us tonight for this big game between Carolina and Duke. You've got another option as well with some ISO cameras and a broadcast on ESPN Plus being brought to you by our pals Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams. They can isolate on Barrett or Reddish or White or whoever they want. The big story in the early going, Zion Williamson leaving with an apparent injury 33 seconds into the game. Maria Taylor's got an update. Yeah, that's right, Dan. Uh, Zion, he did have some shoes brought out to him by Director of Operations, Nolan Smith, but he continued to go back into the locker room. Now, Dad did come out of the stands, go back into the locker room as well. Since then, Dad has come back out. Um, we still have not seen Zion, but he has been in the hallway and gone back to the locker room again. It looks like he's just testing something out right now. Not sure exactly what, but I'll keep you updated. All right, Maria, thank you. We'll keep an eye on that, and I think the crowd will let us know if and when Zion Williamson makes his way back out to the bench. 
Nasir Little into the game for North Carolina. That moves Cam Johnson to the four, but he's staying on Cam Reddish. So it's Cam on Cam. Barrett short on the three. Another offensive rebound by Bolden, who's been playing some really good basketball for Duke in recent weeks. Well, he moves his feet so well, he's able to switch out on a guard. Down on the block to Bolden. And an offensive foul. Use that off arm to try to establish position on May. Took his left arm and wrapped it around Luke May in trying to make that move baseline. That's an automatic call, an easy one for the official, and absolutely the right call. Good defense by Luke May. Well, interesting uh, dilemma, if you will, for Duke right now with Williamson in the locker room and two fouls already on Marquise Bolden. A major key in this game is that matchup there. Jones against Kobe White and no rebounding for Duke. The offensive rebounding for North Carolina, not a big team. And how about this, Dan? North Carolina is one of the best rebounding teams in the country traditionally. You know how many rebounding drills they do in practice? Zero. They do not do that. They just work on it running their normal offense, and it works wonderfully because they emphasize it. It's part of their DNA and what they do. Reddish draws the foul on the drive. And they've had, I mean, generally they are, as you say, a great offensive rebounding team. They've had two or three just really easy offensive rebounds tonight. Easy ones because they go to the glass every time. And last year in the game in Chapel Hill, Cam Johnson had 13 rebounds as a three-man. Now he's 6'8", he's long-armed, but these guys go to the glass. Kenny Williams goes to the glass. They all go to the defensive glass and rebound, and they all go to the offensive glass, and they'll race you back. Reddish at the line for Duke. He's had some big moments recently, including in that incredible comeback against Louisville. Reddish had 16 of Duke's final 30 points. They finished the game on a 35-10 run against the Cardinals to come back from a 23-point deficit. Good slip. And Johnson beats Barrett to the bucket. Cam Johnson and Luke May are off to big starts tonight for the Tar Heels. The middle is not clogged by any big guys that are posting up. That was a set design play for the ball screen slip action. Got an easy layup out of it. Reddish. A little bit strong. White tries to run it down, and he does. And then it's off the foot of May out of bounds. Heck of a play by Jack White pursuing the ball. Now watch this play by Cam Johnson as he runs. He will slip right past and cut across the face of R.J. Barrett right to the basket. There's no weak side help because Luke May is coming up to the top of the key. Jack White went with him. Well designed and well executed by North Carolina. Almost seven minutes in. Duke with just seven points. Barrett absorbs the contact and finishes. That's where R.J. Barrett, in my judgment, is at his best when he is going to the basket. So good in the lane. Nasir Little takes a bump from Bolden and then banks it home. Nasir Little, not only a McDonald's All-American like the four freshmen for Duke, he was the MVP of the McDonald's All-American game. Well, he is a very talented player that is still learning how to play and doing a, a terrific job and getting better. Good extra passing, but again, they can't make a three. And as we mentioned, other than the Virginia game, generally speaking, it's been a struggle for Duke from beyond the arc. What a pass. May wide open. And a chance for Duke to run. Reddish. Well, these threes are awfully quick by Duke. Led to a run out. And an easy two at the other end for Luke May. He's got eight. Johnson's got eight. Heels by 11. Now, when you play against North Carolina, your offense has to help your defense. Not only can you not turn it over, but you can't take a, a bad or questionable shot. Otherwise, it's a run out. And Carolina has run effectively off misses. Duke just two for ten from three. Barrett gets inside again. And it's out of bounds. It'll be Duke ball. But we come back with the Blue Devils down by 11. This season, NCAA coaches and Infinity are taking a timeout to fight cancer with Infinity's $1 million donation to the American Cancer Society. This is an Infinity Timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com.
Welcome back to Cameron Indoor, where Barack Obama is taking in UNC Duke, but he's very familiar with both of these programs. In 2009, it was UNC that won a national championship game and visited the White House, and in 2010, it was Duke who beat Butler and made their way to the White House. And really, Barack Obama told me that his plan to come to this game existed before all the hype did. He's a fan of both of these teams, and of course, he is a fan of basketball. In fact, his personal aide and really good friend, Reggie Love, is here with him at the game tonight. He said he's been trying for 12 years to convince him to be solely a Duke fan because Love did play here at Duke. But also, Obama did spend some time with UNC back in 2008 when he was on the campaign trail. He loves Roy Williams and what he's been able to do with his program and has certainly had some experience with both of these teams doing. Maria, thank you. Great stuff. I don't know about you, Jade. That's a really cool shot. Maria doing a report with President Obama sitting right in the background. Now a steal by Delorier, and he's got back-to-back -back buckets for the Blue Devils. Duke getting the crowd into it after the timeout with the score off the out-of-bounds under, off the penetration by Jones. Now a turnover by North Carolina. And Duke able to pile up some points and opportunities. Javin Delorier doing a really good job of shooting the gap just on a guard-to-guard -guard pass and taking it the other way for an easy score, turning defense into easy offense and playing ahead of the North Carolina defense. Roy Williams to his bench as he changes his backcourt with seven woods and a Brandon Robinson coming in for the heels. Pull-up jumper, Trey Jones. Ball's loose. And it belongs to Carolina. Really good help by 7th Woods to stop that drive. I think you want to let Luke May touch it. Good pass. What a beautiful pass by Luke May. And a terrific job by Garrison Brooks of sealing off his defender. Carolina, you're so worried about the three-point line. It opens up things inside that line. Reddish from the free throw line. Well, again, Carolina getting down the court quickly. Another good pass from May. Little can't convert. But May can on the follow, and he's into double figures. Carolina just put themselves in position to get an offensive rebound. They keep it alive if they can't grab it and get second chance opportunities. The latest ever for a scheduled first meeting of the regular season between Duke and Carolina here on February the 20th. The rematch will be in Chapel Hill March 9th. Follow on the weak side by R.J. Barrett. And now a steal by Jones. Alert play. But they give it right back. Well, Dan, if you remember when Zion Williamson got poked in the eye, in the game against Florida State in Tallahassee, the guy that stepped forward was Cam Reddish. And you wonder if in this game, if Zion Williamson isn't able to come back soon, if Reddish can step forward again, because he's going to have to score in this game if Williamson is unable to play. Over the top, Brooks from Woods, and Carolina getting the ball in the paint and to the rim with ease so far. That's what Carolina does. That was just a simple little back pick Eliminated help, not any communication on the part of the Duke defense, just really well executed by North Carolina. Something that you've seen a thousand times from Carolina this season. They just executed so well. Jack White 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Alex O'Connell with a save. And he's wide open in the corner. And Duke continues to struggle, but they continue to get offensive rebounds. Another miss from 3. One thing Duke is not doing, they're taking a lot of threes, but there are opportunities to shot fake and drive. Little stepped out of bounds. All right, watch after this pass from the left side to the right. There's going to be a back pick, and there's no communication between Marquise Bolden and Alex O'Connell, and not enough pressure on the ball by Trey Jones to be able to take away vision to execute that pass. J24 of Carolinas, if I'm looking at it right, 26 points. 24 of their 26 points are in the paint. Because the floor is spread and they're taking advantage of it. They're not launching up challenge threes. They're getting to the rim and they're offensive rebounding. Duke now two for 13 from three-point range. Jones inside, offensive foul. A lot of dribbling, not a lot of movement. The drive came against a set North Carolina defense. 
And right now, North Carolina just out executing Duke. Got a switch. So Garrison Brooks guarding Trey Jones tried to drive, and then Brandon Robinson right there to get the charge. Just well defended by the Tar Heels. Roy Williams yelling at Seven Woods, got off the bench. Get going. He doesn't want anybody walking the ball up the court. A gamble by O'Connell. Frees up Robinson. There he is keeping it alive. And they get it back. Give credit to Cam Johnson to keep that ball alive. Great pass. Another easy look inside. Great movement. Great passing. And the lead is now into double digits for Carolina. That offensive rebound put Duke into scramble mode. And they lost track of who they were guarding. Just keeping that ball alive has been a huge factor in North Carolina getting second chance opportunities. Barrett being guarded by Johnson. Can't convert with the right hand. Carolina running again. Another lob and it's swatted away by White. He read it well. well you got to take that ball all the way to the bucket. Well, North Carolina has done a very good job defending R.J. Barrett. Right now it's Cam Johnson, but earlier in the game it was Kenny Williams, and Williams did a fantastic job in guarding R.J. Barrett. May over Bolden. Not this time, and White down with another rebound. Big minutes for Jack White. Again, Zion Williamson, if you joined us late, left in the first minute with an injury, has not returned. Jones thought about it, passed up the three. Well, Woods was giving help on the R.J. Barrett drive and closing out late. O'Connell no, and Duke still can't buy one from beyond the arc. This is starting to look like the way Duke shot the ball against Syracuse. I mean, it was just three after three, and they were playing. And of course, they're missing their biggest inside presence without Williamson. Deep one for Johnson won't go. Another offensive rebound for Carolina. Boy, the three-point shooting has been ice cold for both teams in this game. Boy, right now, the Duke guards are having to get in there to get defensive rebounds. Some of the Duke guards have been Duke's best rebounders. And North Carolina with some fresh bodies to come in. Roy Williams plays a lot of players, hoping at one point it's going to take a toll on the opponent, just like body blows in a prize fight. White the kick, Jones the three. Help side defense by North Carolina has been excellent. And then they were, are recovering late to what you would consider non-shooters. Robinson goes coast to coast. Brooks misses the dunk. But there for the follow is who else? Luke May, who's got 14. And Mike Krzyzewski will use a timeout. Carolina passing the ball beautifully. Getting the ball inside. High percentage looks. And they are up a baker's dozen here at Cameron. No pressure, great execution. North Carolina and Duke here to Cameron, and it was just 33 seconds into the game when Zion Williamson skidded on the left foot, the foot breaking the shoe, but then he reached for the back of his right knee, or certainly appeared to, walked under his own power, but with a limp, to the locker room and has not returned. Time to take a look at tonight's player resume brought to you by Indeed. And you can see what they're missing. Some of the best numbers in college basketball. And we have just received a report from the Duke SID's office that Zion Williamson will not return tonight. No further information other than he will not return in this game. It just said... We were sent a text by Mike DeGeorge who said, Zion, knee, will not return. What a development in this game, 33 seconds in. Never seen anything like this in a basketball game. Wave off the basket as Javon Delorier is called for going over the back. Boy, that looked like a tip-in that was behind the in interior play. That's just a good tip. That's stunning. And Duke, again, not to belabor the point, but they're two for 16 now from three-point range. They've taken more threes than twos tonight. Kobe White 
And the three around and out. Down with the rebound, Jones. Jordan Goldwire is into the game now for Duke. Played some big minutes near the end of that Louisville comeback. Reddish with a chance for three. Brandon Robinson down for the Tar Heels. Reddish is going to have to have a big game. Like, he has to be a primary scorer with Zion Williamson out. It has got to be R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish that have to take this game over. And Reddish, with his elbow, got right into the chin of Brandon Robinson here. You wonder, I don't think the officials are even going to look at that. But a strong move by Cam Reddish to get to the free throw line. And this young man has got to, he's got to have a great game. There's just no other way around it. Reddish and Barrett are the two big scores that Duke has with Williamson out. Barrett the leading scorer in the ACC. Reddish averaging almost 14 points per game on the season. And it's odd the way he, shoot, he has shot the ball at home and on the road. You know, at home in Cameron Indoor Stadium, he's shooting 31% from the field. On the road, 41%. And a 10% difference in the way he shoots from three. And we're going to have some sort of an official review. Is it? It's got to be. It's got to be the elbow. The fact yes. that Brandon Robinson yeah. was hit in the face, and was it just incidental contact in a basketball play, or will they say that he led with that el elbow? And really, the issue was hit, were his arms more up than out, and I think that's going to be called incidental contact. That will not be a flagrant one. And the issue is, are his arms more up than out? And I think it's going to be just called a common foul, and it's going to go on Robinson. So nothing on Reddish, and Reddish now with the line because of the foul on Robinson with a chance to complete the three-point play. So Cam Reddish, he had 22 points against Louisville in that game against Florida State where Zion Williamson was poked in the eye. He wound up with 23 points, including that game-winning shot off the out-of-bounds under. And he has now become even a bigger key than he was at the opening tap. Ten-point lead, Carolina. Luke May has been outstanding tonight for the Tar Heels. White with a drive. Good job by Delorier to cut him off. But what a rebound by R.J. Barrett, who's an excellent defensive rebounder. And as you've said, he's one of the guys on this team who can rip and go, and that'll be a goaltending call on Brandon Huffman to make it an eight-point game. Huffman was right under the basket. Really an easy call for the officials. Anytime you block a shot right next to the rim that was taken that far out, 99 times out of 100, that's going to be called the goaltender. And smaller lineups really for both teams right now. Huffman goes out, Little came back in. Bolden's on the bench with two fouls. Williamson's injured, so both teams have kind of downsized a little bit right now. Duke's really picked up the pressure trying to force North Carolina further out on the floor. Johnson a miss. Rebound Barrett, here he goes again. Reddish shakes Williams. And Delorier runs it down. And then turns it over two on one. Little. Johnson. And count the bucket. That'll be a goaltending call on Delorier. Boy, North Carolina gets the ball down for it so quickly. Anytime there is a loose ball, a long rebound, Carolina starts that break and they just roll. Jay, and I know we gave this a few minutes ago, but it, it bears updating. 30 points in the paint and two free throws for North Carolina. Remarkable. And this is a three-point shooting team. And yet haven't been able to get anything to go. Goldwire. Another missed three for the Blue Devils. White. What a oh! pass! And what a block by Delorier. Just a spectacular pass and then blocked to answer it. Reddish, beautifully done. Well, just the back and forth nature of this game. Fantastic. White behind the back, off the glass, draws the foul. No, it's an offensive foul. Called on Kobe White. Crowd back into it. Blue Devils trailing the heels by eight.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a Slinger Plus Tots for just $2.99. The 249th meeting between North Carolina and Duke, the greatest rivalry in college basketball. So many outstanding players, including our own Jay Williams. So many great games, big moments. As we take a look now at tonight's former McDonald's All-Americans, five of them on the Duke roster, two of them on the North Carolina roster, and six of the seven are freshmen. Six of them played in the game this past year. And the name at the bottom of that list, Zion Williamson, the most productive and efficient front court player that we've seen in college basketball in at least a decade. Out of this game after 33 seconds when he blew out his left shoe and his looked like his right knee was the issue. Just a, a something we have never seen before. Yep, you're right. And to have a, a player that good and a player that compelling to watch out of the ball game has really affected, I think affected Duke in a in a very odd manner they're trying to fight through it but i've never seen anything quite like this let's go down to maria taylor and guys i'm told that zion is back in the training room watching the game with his family i've seen his dad and his mom and his brother all go back there so still trying to stay engaged and, and watch his team from the back right now guys all right maria thank you and again we have received word he will not be back after the two by R.J. Barrett, a three for Luke May, who's now got 17, and that's the first made three of the night for Carolina. Boy, Luke May has been absolutely spectacular in this game. He's been everywhere. What a player he is and what a career he's had. Meanwhile, Jay Barrett and Reddish have 22 of Duke's 26 points. And that's the way it's got to be. They've got to continue to put points on the board. Reddish tries. Little the rebound, knocked away by Reddish. And he'll finish. But Reddish has an incredible knack to get steals. One of the best steals guy, guys not only in the ACC but in the country. Good screen by May. He was wide open for a pass back. Good matchup here with Barrett guarding Cam Johnson. White wants a screen, drives, gets into the paint around Barrett and lays it in off the glass. A great job by Kobe White to get past R.J. Barrett. What another great pass by Jones. My goodness, the passes in this game have been absolutely spectacular. And one of the few fast break opportunities for Duke. They have excelled in those situations this year. Bolden with a rejection and they're running again. O'Connell, but a foul is called against Jones as Kenny Williams steps in and takes the charge. Number two on Trey Jones. Rivalry week rolls on Saturday with two more great matchups here on ESPN. First, outstanding game out of the SEC at noon Eastern. Number five, Tennessee. Number 13, LSU. Then at 6 o'clock Eastern, we'll be up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse along with, oh, about 36,000 people as the Orange hosts Duke. Syracuse with a very impressive win over Louisville tonight. You know, Dan, both these teams want to play fast. But even when you're playing fast, something that will avoid a couple of these charges, you know, you don't may want to sound simplistic, but a simple jump stop. At times, you have to use that free throw line like a stop sign. Is it a lost start? Something that... No. No, it's just not being used. Barrett draws the foul. How good is he in transition? He's the best, I think, in the country at getting to the basket, both in transition, in the half court, he can do it at different speeds. Left-handed, but a spectacular finisher and a, an excellent defensive rebound. He, rebounder. He averages over seven and a half rebounds a game. And when he gets a defensive rebound, he acts as a point guard. He can rip and run, as can Cam Reddish. They don't have to find Trey Jones as an outlet. They can take it themselves. That makes the break that much faster and more efficient. Coming off an outstanding game against NC State on the weekend. Just the fourth triple-double in Duke history. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Carolina breaks it easily. May no. Another rebound for Barrett. Reddish to Jones. Barrett for three. This is a really important last minute of this first half. 
Look at May running the floor. And we get a foul underneath as Delorier is called for the block, was in the restricted area as a help defender. Still to come, the Jeep halftime report with Reese Davis, Jay Williams, and Seth Greenberg. A look back at that Syracuse win over Louisville we talked about. And Villanova loses again. A nice win for Patrick Ewing and Georgetown tonight. Well, that's about the only thing that's gone wrong for Luke May so far tonight. Yeah, he's missed a few shots, and but North Carolina playing at its pace. They just haven't been as efficient as they usually are. They have enough possessions and had enough shots to be up in the mid-40s, getting close to 50. May averaging 14.5 points per game of the season. He's got 18 already tonight. The question is, can Duke make this a one-possession game before halftime, and can North Carolina stretch it out? There's the shot fake, but Jones misses the jumper. Ball's loose, and it belongs to the heels. They can go two for one here. Boy, that is a terrific play by Seventh Woods to keep the ball in bounds. And a foul, I believe, on DeLaurier. And it is. All set up by a very good cut and an excellent shot fake by Cam Johnson. How good of a season has Cam Johnson had? He's been just terrific. Shooting almost 48% from three-point range. That's top five in the country. Better than 16 points per game. Somehow overshadowed. Just kind of a quiet, silky smooth player. 6'9". The grad transfer now at his second and final year after coming over from Pitt. Shooting over 50% from the field. 45% from three. And over 80% from the foul line. Those are... Just excellent numbers. You know the last heel to do those three things, have those three percentages in the same year? I don't. Your buddy Hubert Davis. Is that right? Yeah. Who could shoot a little bit? He could shoot a lot. <laughs> Great player. <laughs> Barrett and Reddish with 28 of Duke's 32. Williams, a very good defender. White draws a crowd. Shot clocks at six. A force by Reddish. And it belongs to Carolina. They can get the last look. Johnson out ahead of them. Oh, he pack, missed it. And he missed the layup. And then a steal by Woods, and they got time to come back again. Another great pass, and Brooks will slam it home on the feed from Woods. How poorly handled the end of half was for Duke, and how well it was handled for North Carolina. We asked, could Carolina stretch it out? They did to 10 points. Could Duke make it a one possession game? The answer, an emphatic no. What a finish in the last minute of this half for North Carolina to stretch it to a double digit lead in Cameron Indoor Stadium. 42 points for the heels, 34 of them in the paint, and a 10 point lead on the road against the Williamson-less Duke Blue Devils here at Cameron. When we come back, we'll send it to the Jeep Halftime Report with Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Welcome back to ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. First minute of the game, Zion Williamson slips, injures his right knee, will not return. And Carolina taking advantage, specifically Luke May, a game-high 18 points to go along with six rebounds and a couple of assists in the first half for the Heels, who are leading by 10. This is a Sonic Blockbuster on ESPN. Let's take a look now at our first-half stats, brought to you by Dell. Duke actually got back within five, but didn't play well the last couple of minutes. Carolina got it back out to 10, 34 out of 42 points in the paint. And right now, Barrett and Reddish seem to be the only offensive options for Duke. They've combined for 28 of the 32. Atrocious three-point shooting in this game for both teams. They're a combined three for 34. Carolina by 10. What do you see going forward? Well, Carolina basically doubled up Duke in every category that we would look at. Points in the paint, points off turnovers, fast break points, you name it. I think in the second half, Carolina has to expect that Duke's going to change some defenses. Come at him with some full court pressure, whether it be zone pressure, full court, or man pressure. And then if you remember in the game against Louisville, uh, when Duke was down after 30 minutes, they were down 23. 
they went with a zone press and went back to a 2-3 zone and it changed the rhythm of the game. I think they've got to be prepared for that because Kobe White in the first half, one of seven, two points, four turnovers. He's got to have a better second half. Let's go down to Maria. Well, obviously, Dan, we haven't seen Zion since the first eight seconds of this game, and he's in the back still in the training room with his family watching on TV. I'm told he did not go into the locker room as the rest of the team went in to hear from Coach K. But I did speak with John Shire, associate head coach, and he said one of the biggest things is now they just have to come out shooting with confidence and do a better job rebounding, which is something you obviously lose without Zion. But the hope is by getting better on the boards, it could help lead to their break and up the tempo in the second half. All right, Maria, thank you. We are ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster and Cameron Johnson knocks it down. He's got 14. North Carolina forcing a switch and they wound up, Duke wound up switching back and just put the ball in the deck against Alex O'Connell and rose straight up. Just a beautiful jump shot. O'Connell drawing the start in the second half here for Duke. The Blue Devils hoping for some outside shooting from him. Bolden with a nice move but can't finish. The matchup between Kobe White and Trey Jones was basically a standoff in the first half. Neither player played particularly well. Jones, I think, went 0 for 7. Kobe White, 1 for 7. Barrett kicking to Reddish in the corner. Just the third three of the night for the Blue Devils. And look how quickly Reddish has to get back with Cam Johnson streaking down the court for Carolina. Baseline drive, baseline drift into the corner. Cam Reddish ready to shoot. We talked about his importance. He has to have a big game offensively. There's a switch. Bolden on Cam Johnson. Johnson driving around Bolden and lays it in softly. Two more for Cam Johnson. What a move. Didn't come with his left hand. He just got it up off the glass quickly with one hand so that Bolden couldn't get up and block it. O'Connell with May on him right now. Barrett driving on Williams and lays it in. Boy, when he can get back to his left hand, he is lethal. Even when he can't, he's pretty darn good. Yeah. And he's going against an excellent defender. I mean, Kenny Williams is the best perimeter defender on this Carolina squad. May over Barrett, and how about that soft touch on the turnaround? He is one confident player right now. Averaging just under 15 points a game, just under 10 rebounds. One of the most productive big guys in the country. They've got a lot of offensive weapons, and right now Luke May is having a huge night. Good show there by Brooks. What a and bad pass. My goodness. Telegraphed it. Brooks tips it away. O'Connell reaches around May and is called for the foul. Boy, May ran right down the floor. Alex O'Connell had to pick him up in the post, and that is advantage North Carolina. But the ball goes into the post two steps off the lane. And Luke May, just an inside pivot and goes right up over R.J. Barrett. Now, you'd think he'd want to power up a guy like Barrett, but just faced him up and shot right over. Barrett still on May, who cuts, takes the pass. And two more for Luke May. He's got 22. But Carolina's able to run its offense without a lot of resistance. That was just a simple little shuffle cut. A little back pick, diagonal along the elbow. And May was wide open. Here's another run out. Johnson, what a pass, and the lay-in for Kobe White. Carolina basketball at its best. That's why North Carolina averages 20 assists per game, one of the most unselfish teams in the country. The lead has grown, Jay, from 10 to 15 in the first three minutes here of the second half. Duke facing some adversity without Zion Williamson in the game after the first 33 seconds, and North Carolina taking advantage of it. A great pass forward. They don't have to dribble advance. And how about the pass by Cam Johnson? That's beautiful basketball. The star in light blue has been Luke May. Does he impress you with his athleticism? Perhaps not. What he impresses you with is his productivity and his will and the fact that he never stops. The offensive rebounding. He runs, he gets low post position, spaces out to the three-point line, and then comes off the shuffle cut, winds up getting into the body of R.J. Barrett and finishing the play. Luke May has been outstanding in this basketball game. 22 points, 8 rebounds, 10 of 15 from the field. And he's not done yet. O'Connell, corner three. 
And again, with Williamson out, Zion likely would have been the guy he started the game on May, and just a much different situation for Luke May with a smaller guy like R.J. Barrett guarding him in this case than Williamson would have been. Pull up by Cam Johnson and another soft touch as May and Johnson are just lighting the Blue Devils up. So they are cutting up Duke with the way they are running their offense and Duke not getting any pressure on North Carolina right now. Those two players, both seniors, have 40, 40 points for Carolina on the night. Friday's NBA doubleheader starts at 7 o'clock Eastern as DeMar DeRozan makes his return to Toronto. For the San Antonio Spurs, of course, Kawhi Leonard now with the Raptors. That'll be an emotional night in Toronto, and then it's out to Oklahoma City for the Jazz and the Thunder, both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Boy, another terrific job by Kenny Williams to stay in front of R.J. Barrett. You know, went down with a little bit of a push. There was no call, but he kept Barrett from getting to the rim. Right to Williams, gets it back, takes a three. And Carolina has extended this lead to 20 points. They've outscored Duke by 10 already in the second half. And Carolina just dominating this basketball game. Johnson off balance, two more. And it's a 22-point lead now for Carolina. Boy, and Cam Johnson went down. And he may be injured underneath the basket. Hope he's okay. He'll need some help to get up as he crashed into the row of photographers and appears to be okay. And a bit of a limp as he makes his way back towards the Carolina bench. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. ESPN of the ACC will bring you the ACC Network in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. Cam Johnson to the heels on the bench. The shoe off, the left ankle getting taped. Here's why. Going up for the shot in transition over R.J. Barrett. Just came down and stepped on a photographer's foot mm. as he's going back into the the row of photographers they are so close on that baseline and you hope that Cam Johnson's going to be okay we've had just too many injuries and even one is too many but what an impact injury has had on this game Carolina on a 13 to nothing run they have blown it open here in the second half reddish from the elbow just a wide pin down and the cutter Reddish could go to the ball or to the basket. A really difficult action to guard. Brooks having to come about 45 feet away from the bucket to go get the ball and help out White. And this is this is really the only way to get back into this game is to pressure North Carolina and turn defense into offense. And Barrett never saw Robinson coming and he took it away from him. And Robinson got away with the walk yeah. after he made the steal and the officiating crew didn't see it. I mean that was a, a major walk that they missed but an alert play to knock that ball away. Great steal and then coming from behind that was a terrific play but the referees are going to say well he bobbled the ball that kind of thing but he walked with it. Jones really up in the grill of Kobe White. Kobe White quick enough to go by, but he's going against an excellent defender. May now with DeLaurier on him, so he takes him outside, but misses the three. Well, Garrison Brooks almost there for an offensive rebound. He is such a good offensive rebounder. Red is spinning and lays it in with a chance for three. That's the talent of Cam Reddish. When Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett are in the game together, sometimes it's difficult for Cam Reddish to get shots and difficult to get rhythm. But he has had some big games this season, and he is capable of big games. It's crazy how both teams, their scoring is being dominated by two players, May and Johnson for Carolina, Reddish and Barrett for Duke. Those four guys, Jay, have combined for 80 of the 101 points in the game. 
I think the difference is for Duke, Reddish and Barrett are really the only ones capable of right. putting up big numbers. They're more capable players for North Carolina that can score. Another takeaway by the Tar Heels. Another touch for May. And he's just bigger and stronger than Jack White. Boy, a terrific spin right into the chest of White and off the glass. Reddish came over to try to block it. Barrett's had Kenny Williams on him much of the night. Little help from May. Barrett open for a three. Boy, how hot has he been from three? 11 of 22 from three, his last four coming into this one. He has a chance to be the highest scoring freshman in Duke history. And we get a look from the fan cam, the student section where the crazies are here in Durham. It is Matthew Tribby, a senior, a computer science major who wants to get into sports analytics professionally, and he's doing the work with the camera tonight. Thanks, Mr. Tribby. Try not to get any blue paint on that thing. <laughs> well, it was 22. It's down to 16, but still a long, long way to go for Duke. And Johnson back in for Carolina. Good sign for them. Wow. And he doesn't take long to get right back into the flow. Boy, what a player coming off a 27-point game against Wake Forest in which he hit 7 out of 10 from three-point range. Well, Cam Johnson is projected as a late second round pick. And man, I think he's got to be taken earlier than that. That kid is a player. That's a steal for whoever gets him there. 6'9 with that kind of shooting touch. And he can rebound. Nasir Little, who hasn't really been a factor tonight, as he has it partially blocked by White. Little's got a, a bit of a sore ankle, took an elbow to the sternum in the Wake Forest game, playing sparingly tonight. Jones knocks down a three. His first points of the night. Little gives it away, and then Johnson gets it back. Well, it seems like every time Duke is able to make something happen defensively, Carolina just turns and takes it away from him. And a, another alert play from Cam Johnson. His little box set, slice, and stagger. May. Good job by Reddish. Robinson is open. Duke ball. Reddish in transition. And Delorier is fouled. Timeout on the floor. Eight minutes into the second half. Carolina up by 15 here to Cameron in the latest installment of the best rivalry in the sport. Back at Cameron, the former First Lady Michelle Obama is not here, but the former President Barack Obama is here, has been watching the entire game. He's, he loves basketball, plays a lot of basketball, and as a presidential hopeful back before in 2008, he played a pickup game at North Carolina and a, a walk-on of the team at the time, Jack Wooten, was that's him on the left, was guarding Barack Obama and was guarding him hard, we understand. And eventually Roy Williams blew the whistle, called Wooten over, and he said, hey, kid, see the guys in the dark suits over there? You might want to ease up on Mr. Obama a little bit. Let him score every now and again. The end of the story is a year later, Carolina wins the title. Obama's now the president. Carolina goes to the White House. And when President Obama's meeting all the players when Jack Wooten it's his turn to meet him shakes his hand and hands him a resume how good is that did he get a job I don't know <laughs> <laughs> a for effort though Jack hope you're watching tonight the picture in the upper right was Tyler Hansbrough trying to block <laughs> the president shot good play by Cam Johnson just staying in front of Jack White and picking up the charge Mike Krzyzewski doesn't like it, but. Well, North Carolina's done most everything right in this game. And it seems that Duke emotionally has not recovered from Zion Williamson going out in the first 33 seconds. And Carolina has taken great advantage of it. Duke shooting just 36% on the night, and they've committed 15 turnovers. A block by Reddish. 
Open is Barrett for three. No offensive rebounding at all for Duke. It's been one, essentially one and out. And very little touch from three-point range. Five of 28. Good Cutting cut. again is Johnson. Boy, does he move well without the ball. And Cam Johnson does everything well. The transfer from the University of Pittsburgh. Just an outstanding player. Very skilled and has been very well coached. You know, Carolina's depth a little down tonight. Still out with injury. Sterling Manley, a big man, Leaky Black. They're without both of them, so the rotation a little bit tighter for Roy Williams. Keeping the floor spread and going right over the top. Now, there's nobody down in the low post. North Carolina not running many of their box sets, which can keep the lane clogged a little bit. They're just spreading Duke out and taking advantage of cutting lanes. Reddish a three. And is Duke going to have to shoot their way back into this from beyond the arc, even though it's gone so poorly tonight? How many good passes have the Tar Heels made tonight? Well, Seventh Woods got it all the way to the rim, passed it underneath, and then right back to Luke May, who was there for the easy shot five feet away. But it was all started by the initial push by Seventh Woods, who got essentially all the way to the rim, passed an excellent defender in Trey Jones, and then a great pass by Cam Johnson. This is an excellent passing team, and it is fun to watch them pass the ball. Very unselfish. Luke May down with his 11th rebound of the night to go with 28 points. Duke ball. Well, Trey Jones got a hand on it, but still North Carolina able to get it to the rim with the pass advance up the left side of the floor. And a little bit more rim protection now for Duke as Marquise Bolden, who was in some foul trouble in the first half. He comes back into the game for the Blue Devils. But the question is, Marquise Bolden is really going to have to guard out on the perimeter. Because right now, Luke May playing the, the five. Barrett driving on Williams draws the foul. And every, even though he got fouled, everybody from North Carolina able to rally to the ball. Because the only shooter that North Carolina is worried about right now is Cam Reddish. Rivalry Week rolls on Saturday with a couple more great matchups here on ESPN. It begins with Tennessee and LSU in a big-time SEC matchup at noon Eastern. And then game day, and the gang will be up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. It'll be Duke taking on the Orange. Remember, Syracuse won here, 95-91 in overtime a few weeks ago. No Reddish and very little Jones after an early injury in that game. If Carolina wins this game tonight, Mr. Billis, will have three teams at 11 and 2 atop the league standings. Just when you think you've seen everything in basketball, you see Zion Williamson go out after 33 seconds in this game. A blown shoe and an injured right knee. Never seen anything like it. What a move by RJ Barrett. If they're going to win this game and you talked about Reddish a lot, they're two those two guys, Reddish and Barrett, are going to have to carry them. Well, there's plenty of time, but North Carolina is able to answer every time. And North Carolina's baskets are easier than Duke's. I mean, they are scoring easily. O'Connell off the screen. Floater, he's fouled. Little pin down, nice curl by Alex O'Connell. And this is another potential option for offense for Duke. O'Connell's not shooting the ball as well this year as he did last year when he made almost 50% of his threes. But on any given night, he could heat up. He's got a good shooting stroke. Well, he had 16 points against Syracuse in that game where Trey Jones was injured, Cam Reddish unable to play. But coming into this game, he'd only scored 15 points since in the nine games since the Syracuse game. One of two from the line, and it's still a 14-point lead. Carolina with 50 of their 69 points in the paint and make it 52 out of 71. Well, how easy is that? I mean, getting all the way to the rim, scoring with the left hand. There's no resistance. 
And how much of that is no Zion Williams? Well, that's a big factor. But I think part of it is, you know, I think Duke just looks shell-shocked after losing Williamson. Just totally shell-shocked. Another turnover. That's been another problem for them tonight. Jones hustles back, but it bounces to Robinson. Another good pass and a foul on Bolden. Well, seventh Woods, third on this team in assists. Had nine points in the last ball game against Wake Forest. Just gets right past Trey Jones, gets all the way to the rim with ease. And just late getting over there, even if there'd been no rotation down, he could have laid that off to Garrison Brooks for an easy dunk. And he had whatever he wanted. DeLaurier and White back in for Duke. May replaces Johnson for Carolina. And Reddish sits down, probably just to get a break here until the under eight timeout. So uh, even if you were scoring options on the court right now for the Blue Devils. Well, there's a lot of time left in this game, but you just wonder where the points are going to come from. White almost had it, but kept it alive, and O'Connell's got it. North Carolina can put so many bodies into the game. Rebound Brooks. Driving is Woods, playing with a lot of confidence, isn't he? Nobody stops the ball. Just a, a rebound by Garrison Brooks, an outlet pass, and then Seventh Woods gets it all the way to the rim with nobody stopping him. And Roy Williams getting good minutes out of his backup guards with Kobe White on the bench. Jones is wide open again, but another miss. Barrett with a putback. R.J. Barrett just does it all. And now stolen away by Jones. Barrett with the ball. He's got 25 points, nine rebounds tonight. Nice look to White, who still can't get one to go, but a save by Delorier. And White called for another offensive foul. Jack White couldn't get the initial three pointer to fall, then takes the second opportunity to the basket. And then Seventh Woods making another good play. First on offense, then on defense. Woods off the bench has been an impact player for Carolina. Let's take a look at our Sonic Blockbuster feature inside the Duke-Carolina rivalry. Since 1980-81, Mike Krzyzewski, 46-44 Duke. The 149th consecutive game with at least one of them ranked. This goes back to 1960. And between the two programs, at least one of them has played in 24 of the last 38 Final Fours with 10 of them ending with one of these programs winning the national championship. Hey, what other rivalry in any sport can boast that kind of championship pedigree and consistency at the highest level? It's really remarkable when you look at all these different numbers and the fact they're only a few points apart leading into this game. May no rebound O'Connell. 17-point deficit for the Blue Devils, seven minutes to go. Reddish back in for Duke. And the North Carolina defense needs to load up on both Barrett and Reddish. Barrett had to switch hands. DeLaurier ripped it away, but it winds up with Williams. And Brooks kept with it. Robinson over the top to Brooks. It's North Carolina getting everything in the paint. They rush the ball up the court and attack the paint. And Duke has been incapable of stopping the Tar Heels. 18 assists on the night for the Heels. In transition, whether it's Kobe White, whether it's Seventh Woods, and a good little dribble drive by Brandon Robinson, able to launch it up with no pressure on him, nobody to protect the rim, and Garrison Brooks with the easy one. And easy has been the operative word for North Carolina's shots in this game because they have done such a good job passing, such a good job running, and such a good job of limiting Duke to one shot. Carolina has gotten easy basket after easy basket, but to get something easy, you have to work hard for it. 
And Carolina has not only outplayed Duke, they've outworked them. 28 and 12 now for Luke May. Kobe White, who grew up a Duke fan, now freshman at Carolina, says his favorite moment of the Duke Carolina rivalry was Austin Rivers making that game winning shot for the Blue Devils in Chapel Hill. And on cue, he turns it over, and Delorier will get an easy one. Well, trying to split two defenders, just too difficult. Wound up turning it over. Almost did it again. A lot of traffic. Boy, May just never loses his composure, never rushes. Crossover, blocked by Barrett, saved it. Delorier dives for it, and here comes Reddish. Offensive foul, Reddish knocking down Kenny Williams. Boy, Kenny Williams is such a good defender. That was an alert play when he saw that Reddish was coming at him at a diagonal. He just stood right in, took the charge, two feet on the floor, facing the ball handler. That was just excellent defense by Kenny Williams. Jay, 18 turnovers for Duke. How many of them have been charges? At least five? Five, six, yeah. something like that, yeah. Jordan Goldwire comes up with a steal. Kenny Williams takes it right back. 19 Duke turnovers, and now Delorier is down injured. Did he run into the elbow of Seventh Woods? Looks like he... Woods is looking at that left elbow of his and I didn't see whether he ran into it or whether he was swinging he's cut over that left eye well they're gonna have to get him out and the referees are gonna go look Ooh. at it now the left elbow came up and back from seven the woods I don't know if you can call that flagrant if, if, if it's just going to be called incidental. It doesn't look like he, well, maybe. I don't know how that's going to be processed. There was no call on the play, right? Just the no, whistle yeah, blew because no, of the injury. Exactly, yeah. no call. See the reach. That's that's going to be a difficult one for the officials to process. They could go either way on this. Meaning either nothing or a flagrant one. Exactly. Yeah. Like, are you going to process that left arm is going back as sort of a, a natural move of somebody running? Or are you going to say that, no, you know, he's trying to ward off a defender? Mike Eads, Ron Groover, Brian Dorsey, the officials. Now, did they call a foul on Delorier? Oh, they did, yes. They called a You're foul right. on Delorier, yeah. and that's what stopped the play. So are they going to are they gonna put an F1, a flagrant one, on 7th Woods? So there's, here's the reach, and that's the foul that was called, the common foul. If, it, if it's taken this long... They're going to call an F1. They're not taking this long to say, hey, there's nothing there. We're just going to go with the, the foul on Delorier. They, they, I think they're going to wind up calling an F1 here on 7th Woods. And we should get word momentarily. It looks like they have made their decision. Just waiting for the word to get passed up to us here in the Crow's Nest. So I believe we just heard the common foul stands on Delorier, and they have added a flagrant one to Seventh Woods. So that's the seventh on Duke. So it should be, I guess, one and one for Duke, and then, or excuse me, one and one for Carolina, and then two and the ball. For Duke because of the F1 is the way I'm guessing this will go. Yeah, and, and that was a difficult call to process, and I have no problem with it. 
This is taking way too long. There's no reason to go over and explain this to everybody. F1 free throws, let's go. This has to change. You just take too much air out of the building. And what this is a five minute, five minute episode. So Woods will be at the free throw line alone for Carolina again because Carolina is going to get free throws after this. You don't need anybody in the lane. It's not going to be a live ball situation and this this will be one and one for seventh Woods. And Mike Eats and Ron Groover still talking something over near the monitor. They're trying to figure out who's going to shoot the free throws. They know who's shooting for North Carolina, who's going to shoot them for Duke. And look at a summary of tonight's game. Two big scores on each team. They've combined for 99 of the 135. And again, no Zion Williamson after the first 33 seconds for Duke tonight, leaving with a knee injury. And so Woods misses the front end of the one and one. And now it'll be two in the ball for Duke, and it'll be Jack White going to the line for the Blue Devils. 81% free throw shooter on the season. Again, the left eye, a cut, looks like just underneath the left eye for Delorier. And it'll be Duke Ball. It looks like he's got one just over the eye, too, and the left eye lid. Yep. Reddish barely grazes the rim at a rebound number 13 for Luke May. Jordan Goldwire, who did such a good job toward the end of the game in that epic comeback at Louisville, into the game to try to make something happen defensively. Now he's wound up on a switch guarding Luke May. And Carolina ought to go to May right now to switch back. Now Reddish is on him. Williams finds May, who banks it home with the left hand to give him 30 on the night. Just a spectacular pass by Kenny Williams. The baseline drive, nobody rotated over, just a shovel pass right to Luke May. And May is having himself some kind of night. Jones, no. Boy, it's been one and out. And when was the last time Duke got an offensive rebound? Seems like forever. May another touch. The reverse not there. Hey, he didn't make it, but that was about as easy as it gets. Got all the way to the other side of the bucket. Again, with no Williamson in limited minutes for Bolden tonight. Not as much rim protection, not anywhere near the rim protection that the Blue Devils were hoping for tonight. Less than four minutes to go, and it's Luke May leading the way for North Carolina as they're up 17 late in this one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's new made-to-crave menu. Available at participating restaurants now. And the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. All right, fellas, thank you very much. Yeah, there was no way to see what was coming here tonight. And really the most significant moment of the game came 33 seconds into the game. The slip there by Williamson injuring his right knee, destroying his left shoe. And then look, look to, you're right there, to President Obama saying his shoe broke. As the shoe just exploded, and it was, but it was the slip, and ultimately, of course, the knee injury is much more significant. Although nobody's ever seen a shoe explode like that before, it's noteworthy, but the injury is the significant thing. And all we have been told, Jay, knee injury, and we were told at halftime, would not return. We don't know anything about the severity or the nature of the injury, but obviously it is a game changer on the national landscape if this is any kind of a long-term injury for Zion Williams. Losing the presumptive national player of the year, at least to this point. A guy averaging 24 and a half points, just under 10 rebounds, two blocks, two steals, shooting 70% in ACC games. Just a, an incredible happening in this game. 
you know, against Syracuse in this building, we saw Trey Jones go down the first four minutes with a shoulder injury. Cam Reddish not able to play in that game at all, so down two starters. And Syracuse able to win that game in overtime. And in just 33 seconds, Duke loses arguably the best player in the country in Zion Williamson and really never was able to recover. And North Carolina just knocked them back and punched them, and they couldn't get up off the deck. A huge night for Luke May. Duke made a little run towards the end of the first half, got within five. Then, as you said at the time, Duke did not handle the last 90 seconds or so of the first half well at all. And Carolina handled it great. Yes, and went into the into halftime leading by 10, and then just stormed out of the break and got it up over 20 quickly. Every time Duke made a steal, got a turnover, Carolina was able to take it back from him. Just a, a remarkable happening. It seemed like it happened every time. The last time that North Carolina played a number one Duke team here was 2006 and Carolina won that game too. Tyler Hansborough was on that team at a big night 27 and 10. Tyler Hansborough never lost in this building. Isn't that crazy? A block by White. A run out for Barrett, Euro step, and he's fouled. Barrett and Reddish have 51 of the 63 points for Duke tonight. Some tough games still coming for both of these programs. Let's look at Duke's schedule. As we mentioned, on Saturday, they're going to be up at the Carrier Dome to take on Syracuse, fresh off a big win over Louisville tonight. Going to Blacksburg is no picnic. They'll play Miami, then Wake, and then finish the regular season in Chapel Hill. And the big question is, will Zion Williamson be able to play? Goldwire had it, lost it, got it again, and then ultimately loses it a second time to Johnson. Duke trying to step up the pressure, force some turnovers, and they call. will, a 10-second call. Yeah, it, was a it was a tremendous personnel and emotional hurdle for Duke to get over after losing Zion Williamson. But, you know, give credit to North Carolina for the way the Tar Heels played. And also the fact that Duke had a lot of open shots and unable to make them. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski called a timeout as soon as Reddish made that bucket. And it's still a 13-point lead for Carolina and just 2.44 to play. Coming up next, Sports Center with Steve Levy and John Anderson. A full breakdown of this game with the reactions from both head coaches. Rachel Nichols in conversation with Kyrie Irving and the latest... On a Bryce Harper now that Manny Machado was signed. Sports Center next on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Duke bringing full court pressure. Well, 13 points with 2:44 to go. There's still time in this one. Now, North Carolina does it doesn't feel like they should be challenged, but there's still time. Well, one of the reasons Carolina has scored 80 points and done so well tonight, just some pinpoint passing on many occasions. Well, this is an outstanding passing team that is very unselfish. They average 20 assists per game. That leads the ACC, one of the tops in the nation. They look for one another, and they are willing passers. They push the ball up court well, quickly, and they are willing to give it up when a teammate has a better shot. And North Carolina averages 85, 86 points a game. Duke does as well. But Carolina able to play to their average. And Carolina turned the ball over in this game, too. They have 14 turnovers. Seven different Tar Heels have combined for those 19 assists tonight. And now the Heels will try to get it in again. Still have two timeouts. Trying to get it to White. Instead, it'll be Williams. The trap, and they get it over. 
And turn it over. A great back tip by Goldwire. Barrett, no. Would have made it a 10-point game instead. Johnson with a rebound, and he comes out of there. It's a four-on-one for Carolina, and the layup will go for Williams. Boy, what a turnaround. If Barrett gets that three to go, it's a different feeling, and Carolina just takes advantage of the miss and gets a bucket on the other end. Jordan Goldwire short on the three, and May down with his 14th rebound. With those two misses, that could be the that could be the ball game. Wow, tough one for Johnson. Weak side rebound for Brooks, who's had a really nice night for North Carolina. Smart play to use clock. And a chance for a three-point play, and that should just about do it, to say the least, as Johnson gets to the rim easily. Every time Duke is threatened, and not that trying to get it under 13 is necessarily a a major threat but every time Duke is threatened Carolina has had the answer and the answer has been an easy bucket at the rim how many times has Carolina laid it in I mean the points in the paint without dominant big guys to throw it to have been really remarkable 62 points in the paint tonight for North Carolina absolutely remarkable But who would have imagined that Duke, a nine and a half point favorite coming into this game, would have given up over 60 points in the paint? Now, big difference, Zion Williamson not in the game, but still, I'll give North Carolina credit. Again, a win for Carolina, then they and Duke and Virginia would all be 11 and 2 in ACC play. Next game for Carolina is against Florida State on the weekend. The Seminoles are playing really well right now. Florida State's won, what, eight in a row? Yep. In conference. And Carolina will then host Syracuse. They'll go to Clemson and B.C. And then, of course, the return to matchup with the Blue Devils at the Dean Dome on the 9th of March. Well, the experience of North Carolina was a huge factor in this game. Luke May, Cameron Johnson, Kenny Williams. You know, we saw the experience of those players win out. Off the fingertips of Jones out of bounds. A 17-point difference in this game right now. Here are the largest losses for Duke since Mike Krzyzewski took over. All three of them happen to be to North Carolina. Again, this is home losses. And this one is kind of in that neighborhood right now. And good patience. No need to put a shot up if you don't have to. Johnson finally will. Well, he makes it look easy sometimes. Well, he is such a, an outstanding player. He and Luke May were absolutely spectacular in this one. Luke May, 30 points, 14 rebounds. Cam Johnson, 26 points, 7 rebounds. They were absolutely terrific from start to finish. Cam Johnson, the transfer from Pittsburgh. A guy that you cannot let shoot the ball from the catch spot. He did it on the defensive end, staying in front of R.J. Barrett. Rebounded, ran in transition, and then was able to get all the way to the rim with the one-handed finish with the right hand. And then putting the ball on the deck and rising up, landing in the same spot from which he took off. Just a beautiful jump shot and a fantastic player. And remember, rolled that left ankle, had to come out, took the shoe off, got taped up, came back in, and put up these numbers. Yeah, this guy sees Duke Blue like a bull sees red. That's pretty impressive the way he's played in these games. A look at the Saturday schedule on ESPN. It begins with a big one of the SEC, number 5, Tennessee, number 13, LSU. Tigers are good. 2 o'clock, Ohio State in Maryland. Virginia Tech is in South Bend at 4. We'll all be at the Carrier Dome at Syracuse to see the Orange and the Blue Devils at 6. And then a big one of the Big 12, Kansas and Texas Tech as President Obama 
takes his leave here tonight makes his way out of Cameron do a lot of a lot of handshaking on the way out big basketball fan and a lefty You know, Brooks has had a terrific game 14 points eight rebounds tonight for the heels. Yeah, he's been so strong and He's played very well in ACC play Rebounded very well. He's such an excellent defender Always in good position both on his man and then help side I think seven or eight times he's won the defensive player of the game award for North Carolina yeah. and the way they grade out their defenders Yeah, he's won it more than any other player on the team seven times this year Second on the team in rebounding. He had a terrific second half in the, against uh, Virginia last week at 12 points and 8 rebounds. And Johnson limping noticeably now as he's taken out of the game. Must have aggravated that ankle a little bit on that last possession. White down with the rebound. And North Carolina will pick up a win here in Cameron. Carolina showed a lot of toughness in this game. Now the story is going to be Zion Williamson going out with 33 seconds and his knee injury. But give North Carolina credit for an outstanding performance on the road to beat Duke by 16 in this building. And they will take the shot clock violation and turn it over for one last time for Duke. Roy Williams clapping on the Carolina sideline right now a big win for the Tar Heels as they knock off number one tonight albeit without Zion Williamson but as Jay mentioned a very impressive performance for the heels and look at the jubilation for the seniors they go out with a victory and what a job those seniors did tonight for the heels the final score from Durham North Carolina 88 and Duke 72 as the Tar Heels beat the Blue Devils here tonight. Sports Center is coming up next for Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, and our crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching and so long from Cameron Indoor. We're coming back in a moment, but first, let's send you to Sports Center.